What's up guys? Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. Welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. I have an exciting one for us today. We are casting plugs for coho out of a boat. This is a really fun technique and we will break down all that you need to make this happen. So stay tuned. All right guys, so like I said, we are talking about casting plugs for coho salmon. And honestly, what this reminds me of is bass fishing for salmon. Because you are basically taking a bass crankbait and casting it for aggressive coho salmon. Sometimes you're casting to wood, sometimes you're bringing it through big deep slots. But these coho are really aggressive in this technique and will slam these lures. So, in order to go through all this today, we're going to cover just about all that you will need from the actual gear selection on the back end to the plugs, to sizes, to colors. We're going to cover it all. It's going to be a blast. So let's just dive right in here and talk about the rods and reels that you will need to get started. So whether you're a preference of a bait caster or a spinning rod, casting plugs is a blast and can be done either way. So for me personally, I run a bait caster, whether it's my 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 pound uh, rated line for a steelhead rod, or I'm using a drift rod that's a 10 to 17. Both those are two very good rods to start out with, have usually a good tip section with a stiff butt section to really give you some backbone on the end of it. Now for real size, I'm any, running from anywhere on a 100 size to a 300 depends how much line capacity that I want. Um, braid is usually on my reels for the ease of making this happen fishing wise. You're casting, you want braid to cut through the water, get your plugs down quicker in the run that you're fishing. So that's a huge key right there is braid will help you dive to those fish at a quicker retrieve and get down to where the fish are. If you're gonna go spinning route, a rod that's about nine foot is perfect. Um, same with the bait caster, eight, six, nine foot, great size. And with that spinning rod, you want a reel with at least a 3,000 size so you can have some good line capacity on it and be able to catch up with your retrieve rate. So either one of those work great. The spinning rod for a lot of people may increase casting distance and help out there. So then we get away from the gear and the line. I'm running probably, you know what, 20 to 30 pound braid, something along those lines works really well and you get out of that and you start looking at the different types of plugs and guys just like there is anywhere else plugs for salmon is like opening up a shoe store and you just have so many colors so many selections different brands and they all work great so we're gonna go over just a couple great ones that I like to have in my arsenal just for options for you guys and uh, you guys can make the decision on what you want to use so there are a few different companies and I'm going to bring about close to four or five here. Um, so Yakima Bait has this one called a fat fish. There is also another size. This is regular. And then this one is the little fat fish. Two different sizes. Two work great. Um, that's one. A Brad's Wiggler is another style of one of these crankbaits. Or you also may have heard of a storm wiggle ward. Both of these are the same basic plug. They wiggle a little different, but in more or less, the shape of the body is the same. You then have something like recently, Spro came out with their own crankbait, and this one resembles close to a wiggle ward style, so it is a good looking plug. Some great colors and quality hooks there. Um, you really have to like that. These are gommies which is a great upgrade from your standard stock plugs. Another plug that does work well for casting is a Lindy River Rocker. This one dives maybe about seven feet max. So this one's a good one for casting in a little bit shallower run. Gives you some good looks at some of these aggressive fish as they're on maybe a tail out flat. Um, and really just different options here as you see. So that's five right there. Pretty basic, pretty simple. 
Um, you basically have two different sizes to these kinds of plugs, like I said. You have maybe like a half ounce version, like this fat fish here. And then you have a quarter ounce version, which is like this guy here. And these two sizes, most of the time I'm running the, the larger half ounce size. It gives you a little bit deeper if you're casting, but there are instances where the smaller guy will outperform because those fish may be skittish. You may be fishing on something that's a smaller run. Hard to say, but that can be a way to get more bites. Two different sizes. We then can look at colors. Now when you bounce around colors, everybody will tell you their favorite. Honestly, there are so many great colors out there. Getting one in front of an aggressive coho is the key. So I won't go too much in the colors except for a few that I like to personally run. Yakima Bait has one of my favorite colors. This happens to be called Good Old Boy. It's a chrome UV plug with these spots and the flame UV tail. Really does great on a little bit clearer water. Something like a pink and chartreuse is another great one for a little more stain. When you start getting um, into the Brad's Wigglers realm, there are two standby colors that you'll see a lot of people up here in the Northwest using. A fire tiger, which is more like a perch kind of color, or the red herringbone. These two have caught a lot of fish up by me, so very, very effective there. Then again, you keep varying up a little bit. Something with purple and pink, like this BW29 Brad's, is a very good one. As also this purple chartreuse lip. So, a couple different colors, guys. You can go as many as you want. Go crazy. I mean, I got plug boxes that are absolutely stuffed with some of my favorites. Um, you just got to find out what you want to do. But coho and casting plugs really do go hand in hand. Not a ton of people do it, but trust me guys, you're gonna wanna do it because you will catch some of the most aggressive and biggest fish in the river system when you are doing this and they hit just like a bass next to the boat. So imagine hooking a 15 pound chrome bright coho at your rod tip and hold on because that thing will just slam you. So guys, hope this was helpful. Casting plugs for coho, like us, subscribe below. There are so much more coming to us. Coho season is really just getting underway and super excited about what's to come. So guys, we'll catch you on the water. And as always, fish on!